Hello, welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 110 Musical Insights from Heidi's European Residency, Part 2. Today's sponsor is brought to you by J&K Productions. Did you know that not only are they a production company for podcasts, but they are a recording company for musicians? Any musical recording needs that you may have, J&K Productions can fulfill that need. They have all the necessary equipment and expertise to record your next flute recording for college or graduate auditions, competitions, summer festivals, or a flute album. J&K Productions can record any setup imaginable, from solo flute, small chamber, flute and piano, and much more. Consider J&K Productions for your next recording project. Contact them at jkproductions.media. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Flute 360 podcast episode. Today is a continuation of last week's episode, which is episode 109. It's about nine minutes in length, and I would highly encourage you to listen to episode 109 first before diving into today's episode. As a brief reminder, this series is to highlight some of my musical insights that I've gained throughout my European residency from September 2019 through January 2020. I want to share these insights with you so that it can help you towards your musical goals. From episode 109, I established my practice session as a time for creation, exploration, and discovery. By reframing my practice session in this new light, I noticed that I became more curious to explore different options with tone colors, vibrato choices, and the like, which therefore helped me to be more musical overall. Today, I'd like to share another tip that helped me to become more musical in my flute playing. During these new creation sessions, my musical focus had changed. Before, when practicing felt like a chore, I was too focused only on the musical notation itself, the black and white on the page. I think a lot of who I am as a person led me to see music as being only a technical entity, because my brain is wired to being more of a logical thinker and a visual learner, these aspects led me to focus heavily on the black and white. I had to kindly remind myself that the musical notation was and is just a visual representation of the aural art. Of course, we all know that correct notes, rhythms are crucial But with only focusing on the technique, it literally sucked the life out of my playing. Now that I had this paradigm shift, I saw music as emotions, colors, and characters that I could produce. I felt like an actress bringing the script to life through my character in the featured film. If you are having a difficult time, bringing life into your music and having a connection with it, I encourage you to put life into the fundamentals. Practicing scales is, of course, good for technique and in understanding the building blocks of our repertoire. But turn that scale from a technical pattern into a glorious little melody. If you are a flute teacher, I encourage all of us to teach the spirit and character of the music alongside the fundamentals as often as possible. By allowing music making to be my main priority, 
it actually strengthened my fundamentals, which of course are of a high priority as well. So what does this mean for you and your students? Well, I think from a teacher's point of view, if you are helping a student bring the music to life, consider these words from my past music professor, Dr. Sarah McCoy. Meet the student where they are. Like me, they may be analytical in their approach to music. In order to help them achieve a more emotional and colorful performance, you have to start them from their world and guide them over the bridge to the world that you want them to experience. Let's put this into practice. Since musicians can be viewed as storytellers, let's practice the art of storytelling. Just like the black and white of the musical notation, so is the text of the story. Yes, you are reading the written text, but will anyone listen to it if it sounds drab? Probably not. So, how can we as musicians showcase the story or aka the musical work? We tell the story through clear speech and use inflection to highlight particular words. There are highs and lows in the storyline, which we can showcase through the volume of our voice. How the character moves through the plot and what he or she is feeling within the story, we can shade with a particular tone. All of these elements are important to tell the story so it's heard clearly. But if it's not told with heart and spirit, then the story is lifeless. And the way you shape a story is unique to your individual voice. Little Red Riding Hood has been told, I'm sure, a million times. But the moment you share it with your audience, well, that's truly a special performance. However you choose to tell the story, make sure it's convincing to your listeners. One last example, and I promise to put it to bed. It's the difference between playing in one, two, or three D. In one-dimensional playing, the flutist is performing the notes, rests, and everything that is printed on the page. 2D playing is adding a vibrato and color to the performance, but 3D performing is playing what's not on the page, the unseen and the heart of the music. For your next practice slash exploration session, I encourage you to be more present in your body and notice the space around you. Exuberate confidence from within and be an open vessel for the music to flow in and out of you freely. And remember to play the music, not the instrument. I hope these musical insights bring you excitement and joy within your next practice session. Real quick, I want to give you some picks. So I'm going to do a little laundry list, but I hope that's okay. The Netflix show Dexter, the Netflix movie The Little Prince, Yoga with Adrian and Benji, the book What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do by Dr. David Jeremiah, another book titled Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, and I would like to leave you with a quote by St. Augustine. It reads like this. The complete abstinence is easier than perfect moderation. Lastly, please share and subscribe to help support the free content published by the Flute 360 podcast. Thank you. Today's sponsor is brought to you by J&K Productions. Did you know that not only are they a production company for podcasts, but they are a recording company for musicians? Any musical recording needs that you may have, J&K Productions can fulfill that need. 
They have all the necessary equipment and expertise to record your next flute recording for college or graduate auditions, competitions, summer festivals, or a flute album. J&K Productions can record any setup imaginable, from solo flute, small chamber, flute and piano, and much more. Consider J&K Productions for your next recording project. Contact them at jkproductions.media. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. For more information, please visit HeidiKBegay.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review in the iTunes store. Let's talk about flute.